welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, uh, modelling my uh, latest t-shirt, my new t-shirt featuring, of course, Teasel from Teasel's Tudor Trivia, uh, which you'll find on YouTube underneath uh, this video, actually, in the merch shelf or from Teespring, um, which I'll give you a link to in the description. Uh, so, yes, nice t-shirt. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to the short reign of Queen Jane, also known as Lady Jane Grey. For on this day in Tudor history, the 13th of July, 1553, while the Queen's father-in-law, the Duke of Northumberland, was preparing to leave London with the Marquis of Northampton, the Earl of Huntingdon, and troops to apprehend the late Henry VIII's daughter, Mary, Members of the council were meeting with the imperial ambassadors. Who were they and what was going on? Well, let me tell you. According to the four imperial ambassadors in England at that time, in a dispatch sent to the emperor, John Russell, Earl of Bedford and Lord Privy Seal, the Earls of Arundel, Shrewsbury and Pembroke, Lord Cobham, Sir John Mason and Sir William Peter requested an audience with the ambassadors. One of the aims of the meeting was, according to the ambassadors, to ensure the Lady Mary's safety. Following a meeting the previous day with Cobham and Mason, in which the English councillors had informed the ambassadors that Jane was queen and that Mary was opposing it. The councillors had gone on to say that the new Queen's Council did not want the ambassadors to assist the Lady Mary or communicate with her to give her advice and support and informed them that Mary was going to be brought to London, not to offer any violence to her person if she gave them no reason to do so, but only to restore peace and order where they had been troubled. The councillors allegedly threatened the ambassadors with barbarous laws if they acted in any way to cause suspicion. The meeting between the councillors and the ambassadors on the 13th of July seems to have gone well, with the ambassadors recording that unless their countenances belied them, the council were pleased with our discourse because of the statement of your majesty's affection for England and they answered that they intended to reciprocate and act as good neighbours should. It is not known whether it was the meeting with the ambassadors or news that Mary was successfully rallying support in East Anglia or a combination of factors which made some members of the council start to have second thoughts about their support for Queen Jane. But by the 13th of July 1553, councillors including William Herbert, Earl of Pembroke, and Henry Fitzalan, Earl of Arundel, were beginning to worry and began considering changing sides. And the Duke of Northumberland, the previous leader of the government and a strong leader, was not there to dispel their worries and to unite the council. Oh dear. Jane really should have let her father go after Mary. Hmm, what happens next? Well, perhaps you'll get to find out in the next few days. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 13th of July 1626, Tudor poet and courtier Robert Sidney, 1st Earl of Leicester and brother of Sir Philip Sidney, died at Penshurst Place, the family seat in Kent. Now, Sir Philip Sidney is known as one of the great poet and scholars of the Tudor age, but his brother Robert was also a talented poet. You can find out more, including how historians discovered his work, in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Now you can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye bye.